Wasted Potential Podcast is brought to you by... Hey, you there. Are you tired of scrolling through the usual dating apps? Sick of a bunch of basic pics of guys and gals at the beach or holding a large drink acting like they're being adventurous? Bored of profiles filled with must-love dogs and no uggos? Well, try our latest meet-up app called voyeur encounters we will send you daily tips on how to keep track of that special anonymous someone as you watch them from behind your plastic grime stained window blinds some tips may include make sure your lights are off while you're peeping turn your flash off and hold your binoculars in one hand and your junk in the other sign up for our monthly subscription service too and get your first set of binoculars and the first legal consultation free at Voyeur Encounters we watch out for you uh, Happy Halloween everyone my name is Shane here and today we're reviewing Hollow Man which I think there's no better time than to introduce our next stump sponsor uh, Diddy Juice so uh, there's a lot of energy drinks out there there's a lot of like you know everyone's got their own gin and tequila but I, I have found nothing better than our new sponsor Diddy who has given us our juice where no longer do I feel invisible at the party because I am now actually invisible at the freak off and I can do whatever the fuck I want which Diddy told me is a good thing Ronnie and I have tried Diddy juice and instead of making the world a better place as invisible men we've decided to engage in every 12 year old's fantasy of looking in the women's locker room <laughs> try Diddy juice today and get a free sample of industrial sized baby oil. I should say Costco sized baby oil. Diddy juice. Try today and do better than Kevin Bacon did. Every breath I take, every move you make. Now that sounds really fucked up. Diddy will be watching you. to Wasted Potential Podcast. It has been way too long, but we are back and the perfect time, the best time of the year, it's Halloween. And Yay. with me to record our fifth annual Halloween podcast is our very own Invisible Man, because he hasn't been around since July. It's Shane. <laughs> You know, I went and I did a, an experiment and I was kind of trapped where I couldn't sleep because my eyelids didn't keep light out and I'm I'm back now. I broke out of the lab and I'm back, baby, ready to podcast. They let me out. The rat's um, out. <laughs> I can't wait to record our uh, Bring in the Horrors in December. <laughs> <laughs> Missed it by and, a whole year. <laughs> and, and catch up on all the the series that we said we were going to do and now we're watching hollow man <laughs> what a piece of shit i like how you're combining two different types of our podcast <laughs> to bring in the horrors and the end of the year wrap up your brain's so so fucking fried nowadays you know that's what happens when you get a bunch of blue juice and that makes you invisible <laughs> the red juice makes you uninvisible Ah, it doesn't work. It's all fucked anyways. Blood. So speaking of rats and uh, lost and blood, um, this is unfortunately our first Halloween without Dan. Dan was supposed to be here, but um, unfortunately he dressed up as P. Diddy and got arrested. So <laughs> I don't know where the real P. Diddy is, but um, someone free Dan. <laughs> it just didn't help Dan's case that he had literally Costco-sized baby oil under the bridge where he lives. <laughs> And a bunch of Polaroids of ferrets. I don't know what to say about that. Um, but uh, uh, It so... turns out that he had Usher do some weird stuff with ferrets. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, the fortunately, due to technology we have nowadays, Dan is here, but with AI. Say hi, Dan. Hello, gentlemen. It is a pleasure to be here and celebrate this joyous Thanksgiving with you. It's truly amazing that we could capture his uh, his consciousness with a computer, and it only took like four megabytes to capture all of his consciousness. <laughs> he just says the same shit over and over again. <laughs> Shut up, Shane. No one likes you. It's it's truly a blessing to have the computer here with us. But since we trapped Dan's ghost and he's filtering it through AI here, um, let's get back to our usual stuff. We'll keep the traditions going. Um, every year we always dress up in our traditional costumes, and unfortunately this is a um, audio-only podcast, so you can't see them. But this year, my costume is um, Kamala Kebab, in which <laughs> I'm a, um, a beautiful brown stick complete with freedom steak, Orange peppers, despite Donald Trump, and empty promises. <laughs> and, and you just look at around the room and ask for your line. You, what am, what am I supposed to say? You say this. Oh, okay. <laughs> Cue cards. Cue cards. <laughs> oh, that brings me to my costume, which was inspired as I was watching Hollow Man. I'm Harvey Blindstein. <laughs> where I think that no one can see me, but I'm the one that can't see anyone, and I inappropriately touch everyone at the party. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay, getting getting back into the swing of things. Here, it's been a while since we had a commentary track. Shane, um, we have a um, signature drink, and this year for Halloween, we are drinking the. Peeping Tom Collins. That's um, mm. two parts gin, simple syrup, lemon juice. Some I added some Sprite in mine for some some fizz, and then um, an extra shot of vodka just to make sure I go blind. <laughs> you know, of all the drinks that we've put on this that are disgusting and like kind of unrealistic, this one's actually legitimate. It's not a bad one. <laughs> Like, especially with your addition of Sprite. <laughs> what are you talking about? The the time we made that, like, that Sherbert concoction out of alcohol. Oh, my. And, like, it was Sherbert when we watched, um, what's the awful David Duchovny movie? Uh, Evolution? Like, are you telling me that wasn't a good drink? <laughs> <laughs> the green juice or whatever it was? Oh, God. <laughs> it was awful. Um, for and, our, like, um, this one didn't require, like, weird ingredients. Sometimes it's like, what the fuck is that? Where am I going to find that? And you go to BevMo, and it's like... Fifty dollars for a fucking almond extract size, goddamn drink. Well, I, I was looking at different like Halloween drinks and stealing them, and then they got they got like way too much. I was like, okay, I'm I'm going simple. I was like, like what what drink is like simple? And I'm like, I have a bottle of gin that I literally haven't opened. <laughs> I don't think ever since like seven years I've been in my house. So I was like, what's gin? I'm like, oh, Tom Collins, Peeping Tom. It kind of worked out. So winner winner, chicken dinner. Um, sipping games right. for our, for our commentary tracks, we like to pick things that pop up on the screen, and we drink when those happen to entertain ourselves, but also just uh, to make this fun. So, Shane, what's your sipping game? Oh, mine's every time someone's sexually harassed, <laughs> um, which occurs quite a bit. One guy even encourages. He's like, "You're invisible, so what do you do?" You, you fuck chicks when they can't see you like, yeah fuck yeah dude and he's like yeah you do and they're supposed to be scientists we'll, we'll get there so every time sebastian <laughs> harasses or is being a pervert we're gonna drink and then um my drink is every time there's cool clunky 90s technology they talk about or show on the screen we're gonna be drinking well the you science. said cool <laughs> <laughs> I quantify it's it definitely cool. something <laughs> it's so cool i love this movie we'll get to that um shane you have a special game we're doing oh yeah it's gonna be super shitty probably worse than the one where i was doing a car or demon or <laughs> Beamer Beamer. Or... <laughs> demon Beamer Benzer Benzer Bentley. Bentley. <laughs> this might be worse because i'm half-assed it even more um it's, <laughs> it's ghost or goofs <laughs> and it's am i telling a real ghost story or is it a goof <laughs> It would have been for, m more fun with Danny because he would have said stupid shit, but I'm sure the computer will say something <laughs> funny. Say, say something funny, computer. I am not a clown for your amusement. I am a homeless ferret farmer whose spirit is trapped in a dirty laptop. Ah, Danny's ghost uh, is hilarious. <laughs> riveting. 
<laughs> okay. And the last funnier note. thing is when the audience realizes we're just reacting to nothing. <laughs> what are you talking about? The ghost speaks through the computer. <laughs> the ghost in the wires. We should watch uh, fear.com next year. <laughs> we're, oh it's a website boy. that will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> because you end up on an FBI list and they raid your house. <laughs> there we go. Back at it again. Okay. <laughs> Finally, before we start this shit here, um, let's hawk the wares. Um, if you're enjoying this, subscribe on um, Instagram. Uh, subscribe on YouTube. We're on all the podcast platforms. Um, I, got rid of our ex, I got rid of our X account because... Um, well, actually, it's still there, but I deleted my app because I can't do this politics anymore. Because, <laughs> like, I was getting fringy shit on there. I was like, I gotta, I gotta get rid of this. I was like... Our I'm podcast gonna, I'm gonna, is about... We were getting recruited to the Ukraine. <laughs> it was getting uh, weird. I did not care for it, so I, we're no longer on X. We're on Instagram. Reach out to us. Shane's never here, and Dan is apparently busy, too. So I'm the only one without a life, so please text me if you, or reach out to me on Instagram. If you want to podcast with me, I'm lonely. <laughs> it was really weird when Trump endorsed our podcast. <laughs> it was cheaper than you would think. <laughs> it was very affordable. Yeah, um, Kamala too. <laughs> <laughs> they need the money. Okay, so um, it's a commentary track for Hollow Man. I guess we didn't mention that yet. I guess we, it was kind of implied, but um, oh, we're watching yeah. Hollow Man. Yeah. So I'm starting at two seconds with the uh, Columbia. Uh, Columbia Pictures logo is brightening up my screen. All right. Let me catch up to that. I'm at three seconds. So three, two, one, play. Okay, so we're watching Hollow Man, which was, what, what, 99? 2000. 2000, okay, that makes sense. Um, I saw in some of, the, like, the trivia, like, J-Lo was originally offered the role um, mm -hmm. that Elizabeth Shue was in, because I was getting hardcore Anaconda vibes <laughs> from this. Um, except Anaconda was more charming than this piece of shit. Um, Ronnie, what... Paul Verhoeven, that makes sense. Um, Ronnie, <laughs> kind of. What? Kind of, yeah, like, but I expect more out of him. It didn't have the charm that Paul Verhoeven usually has. Well, uh, I'll, get Ron I'll get into that in a little bit, because I have, I have shots or not where I'll give Shane true or false questions as well, so I have something about oh. that. What was your question? What made you choose this piece of shit? Because I think we all <laughs> offered a movie, and you said this, and it had been... I probably was a child when I watched it. Somehow, why a child was allowed to watch this, but I couldn't remember much of it. I just remember Kevin Bacon, Invisible Man, and I remember that he gets rapey, but like, um, that doesn't quite do it justice. Um, <laughs> he turns into a thirteen-year-old boy. <laughs> like, it is baffling that adults wrote this this definitely seems like a middle schooler's idea of what you would do if you were invisible yeah and i, I know it's really... a book right like in the 1800s like is it supposed to be take a place like it's like a scientist gone wrong type thing you bet you've you've, uh, you've so many things i need to say when you ask me like 14 different questions right there to adjust but um uh before we get to that this is my favorite like 2000s trope where it's like this really kind of um you know, very animated kind of um, main titles mm -hmm. come on here. It always reminds me, Jerry Goldsmith, classic composer, did this trash. Um, <laughs> did, uh, I was thinking of like X-Men or like Spider-Man or like all those like, um, mm -hmm. or Daredevil, like all those opening credits or like those comic book kind of ones. It, this is like a It has a Daredevil-like soundtrack. <laughs> yeah. I want to rise. I want to die. <laughs> I want to mise. <laughs> That's the um, the late '90s, early 2000s, like industrial new metal phase, which I both love and hate for so many different reasons. Nine Inch Nails was the only one to make it out alive. <laughs> Blame Limp Biscuit. Um, oh, I guess you also have um, fucking Lincoln Park. Well, I guess they didn't make it out alive, but um, but yeah, Paul Verhoeven um, made some of the greatest '80s movies of all times, and then also Hollow Man. And I picked this film. <laughs> Because, like you, I saw this way too young, and I think this explains a lot about me for why <laughs> I have a high tolerance for fucked up sex in movies. 
you know, the weird thing about this movie, though, is that it goes hard, but it pussies out at every major moment. You know what I mean? Mm, like, ew. like where it could where it could really get dark and take it over the edge where it, it, you would watch this because it's fucked up. But it, it pussies out. It almost is like borderline PG-13. Yeah, know? except for, as you say this, um, our protagonist, Kevin Bacon here, is going to <sighs> do techno babble, drink, and oh, then yeah, also drink, drink because he's about to look out that window there at his neighbor. So this is the classic trope where the computer has the answer all along. Um, if you needed to punch it in and the computer told you you were right, then did we already have the right answer? Like, um, you, you, you see what I'm saying? Like, if it can run the simulation and the simulation is like, you did it, like, then we already had the answer. Well, oh, the yeah. simulation runs if that, if that set up genetic code would work. Oh, yeah. And here's Kevin Bacon, our, our hero, um, looking through his window at a lady changing. And then yeah. And that she closed her blinds. Yeah, so drink. Um, but, yeah, um, this movie had a lot of fucking effect on me now as an adult for the films <laughs> I watched. and um, But, yeah, when you said a 13-year-old wrote this, I don't think you could say it any more spot on, honestly. <laughs> um, it's... Like, uh, like, the, like, like the Peeping Tom stuff, like, like – the, the the terrible unfunny like humor and jokes and then like the creative but also uncreative like violence <laughs> i so it's like they don't act like humans like i i get like they should have done more subtle shit like he's standing at the window and she's changing and he's like trying to like oh i shouldn't look but he's like kind of looking you know what i mean because like yeah you might be tempted, but you know you shouldn't type thing. But he just is full like, no, I'm a prick. I'm a piece of shit. No, that's the um, that's the funny thing about this film is that like when I was like doing some research for it, like Paul Verhoeven said, like like there's a lot of cutout stuff that's way worse for like the sex, like like the later spoilers, the rape scene. There was actually much more um, uh, going on, and they show more, like not like mm -hmm. obviously penetration because you can't see anything. But like there was right. more, but but then Verhoeven was like, oh, we want him to be sympathetic. So I'm like, I'm like, he's a, he's from the beginning, he's not sympathetic. He's, he's an asshole, and he's like peeping, and he has like no like ethical problems, with just like watching. He is in no way sympathetic. Like you, he is he's as bad as he is when he's invisible as he is when he's not, and we're supposed to believe that he went crazy, right? Yeah, well, I guess it just heightens, like, the ego, because he always has an ego, and then, like, it just heightens it. It never really kind of explains why he goes mad. All they say later is, like, the longer they're invisible, the more unstable they get, because the gorilla... Right. I think they say it next. They say, like, the, the longer the gorilla's, you know, invisible, the more messed up it is. And I don't know if it's, like, the serum itself, or just because the fact that you're invisible just fucks with you. Right, you can't sleep because you can't close your eyes. Like those kind of things are kind of interesting. And what they should have done is made Josh Brolin's character go invisible and turn into this monster. Because then you go, oh shit! Like that's a true conversion, you know? Mm -hmm. Kevin Bacon just is still himself. He's just invisible now. Yeah, well, like what they should have done is made him, you know, like. Like Jeff Goldblum in The Fly, because like I get a lot mm -hmm. of fly vibes in this, but you know, way yeah, worse. It's very so then like, -esque. yeah, like like you know, just, like because I think it works that Kevin Bacon's like I'm gonna do it because I want the credit. I'm not gonna let the government take this from me. But his character, well, I think all the characters actually are the problem. The characters in this movie suck, but um, but especially Kevin Bacon, he's never likable. So then when this kind of falls apart. It's like oh well, I never really cared to begin with. So Sebastian's always kind of an asshole. This will get us into the other point about he's working on something that would literally change the world, and the Pentagon's like, I'm shutting you down. You're like, whatever. Shut the fuck up. Like, <laughs> the Pentagon has no morals. <laughs> What'd you expect? You're making it for the Pentagon. It's going to go for a military. They even talk about it later. They, like, they even say, we're, like, like eventually it's going to be taken over and used for the military. It's like, well, that's going to definitely be on the up and up. Like, there's no way that that's going to be abused by someone in Congress and or in the I'm Pentagon. Only an, I'm only an amateur scientist, 
But I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure all projects that have Pentagon funding have a military or Pentagon liaison to mm-hmm. keep an eye on this shit. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> no, no even shit. the Manhattan Project was run by the army. You it, like it had a general in charge of it. Yeah, who knew what was going to. on at all times? Yeah, because like you you don't just give money to fucking scientists and let them run wild. <laughs> like someone's got to ream them for the, for the good of America. Um, speaking of the good of America, shut or not, Shane. This is a personal one for you and me. Uh, this is our first film featuring actor Kevin Bacon. True or false? Hmm. Let me think. How well do you know our catalog? I'm trying to remember. There, if if we did, there was only one, and it would have been like a short thing. But I'm gonna say yes. This is our first Kevin Bacon. Incorrect. Drink. Damn we it. Want- you made me like I didn't even think I thought I just went back and thought about the first one and I thought for a second then I was like oh yeah you made me watch Crazy Stupid Love for Valentine's Day oh one year. shitter that's and Kevin right Kevin Bacon's Damn in it. that he plays he plays the guy uh, the other guy yeah he's David a prick, but he's really not. <laughs> yeah, l- fucking Lingelbaum <laughs> piece of shit so here's this part why does he have to they have dart guns mm-hmm why doesn't he use a dart gun? Um, oh, he also has this, right? He has the thermal imager. Why wouldn't you always use the thermal imager when dealing with fucking invisible creatures? <laughs> oh, Shane, it's a horror movie. Oh. Horror movies are stupid, and so I love them. Also, it's a thermal imager that's totally 90s tech. I'm drinking. I love it. It's super fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. But so this is our intro. We see that instead of infecting something docile or, you know, easy to handle, they go, what's the most dangerous thing that we can turn invisible other than a goddamn tiger? Like, <laughs> oh, a giant ass gorilla. So well, then Josh Brolin goes, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put myself in an unlocked cage with a giant invisible gorilla. What could go wrong? Mm-hmm. I couldn't so imagine is, that beating the living shit out of you. This is where I had the first vibes of, oh no, this movie's going to be really fucking dumb. <laughs> oh, I love this movie. I think um, this movie works for me except for the characters and then the, yeah, I think just the characters for me, honestly. Um, like if yeah. Sebastian wasn't a sick pervert, if these characters acted like, you know, scientists and whatnot, I think I, I think you could salvage this. I like even though this is definitely 20 years old dated technology, I love it all. And I love the, the techno nonsense. I like some of this, but yeah, it's a trash movie and I love it so it much. It reminds me of deep blue sea. It reminds me of Anaconda, like this mm-hmm. kind of cheap early two thousands action horror thing. And when you said that Paul Verhoeven wanted to go harder, mm-hmm. I go, wow, he should have, because this is the kind of movie that you do go hard on. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, well, yeah, it's it's it, it's already like very like um, exploitative, like you know, it's it's trashy. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a remake, so and and it's like a throw because like you don't make movies like like this anymore because they're like trashy and they're like you know twenty years too late for this. So then just go mm-hmm. for it, just just go above and beyond and go over the top. Yeah, it, because like you you do put and <laughs> you love your rape scenes, and I always get weird, but like this would be the movie that you do a rape scene where someone's being raped by an invisible person. You know what I mean? Like that would fit in this movie and it would, I hate to say elevate it, but it would drive the point home more of like the darkness of this movie, but it pussies out and it's basically a daredevil movie with an invisible guy. This is really dark, but, but he should have definitely, you know, done that with Elizabeth Shue. Like, cause, like, cause mm-hmm. in that case, then, then that shows Sebastian, you know, goes way too far, and and he's irredeemable, and then it, and it lets her know he's gone too far. But you know, I guess murder's bad enough. But uh, but yeah, kind I would... of. <laughs> but um, yeah, there, there's things here I love, and there's tons of things that are just god awful. So this is Chekhov's gun, the spinner. Um. <laughs> <laughs> So they they mess oh, drink, up too. I guess. 
Wait, no, oh, yeah, that's, that's a real cool. thing, right? This thing, the though. The spinner, but the, no, no, that's not real. <laughs> this weird, like, looks like a nuclear bomb. <laughs> it looks like some kind of, like, um, EMP thing, but I'll drink. Yeah. It's, God, it's written by a 12-year-old. Yeah, like, the dialogue's all awful. The, all the dialogue is so bad. So what was interesting about this is like um, they don't like s- explain anything yeah. at all. Like like the like like they don't even bother, and that's why like the like the twelve thirteen year old you know thing it fits. And that's why I'm saying like 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 you're saying go above and beyond. Like this movie is not pretending to be scientific at all. It's not trying to be artsy and intelligent. It's just it's just like goofy trash. So go for it. Go for the gore. Go for this all this nonsense because like so for my preparation for this i listened to the audiobook for the book i watched the original 1933 and i also watched the remake in 2020 mm-hmm. uh for the invisible man so i watched a lot of invisible man shit and this is the worst oh, <laughs> yeah i am sure oh, it's orange it looks like tang well it, it totally misses what i assume the premise would be which is a man who pushes science too far becomes the his own experiment and is seduced by power, you know, and loses their mind. Cause really it's about power. Yeah. 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 Like the motif of like this movie I got was like, um, like seeing beyond having that beyond power of like, you know, like what's seen and what's not seen. Like, you know, Sebastian's always kind of like a monster, even though you can't see him underneath it all. Like, like you know like visible like, like he's watching things and spying on people and so it's all about sight and you know whatnot like watching people inside and out so you know it's all that nonsense there but um in the original yeah. book it's a you'll never get this it's a cockney like um uh albino redhead who who i think he takes someone else's kind of He's a scientist, but I think he kind of pushes beyond, takes someone else's idea. I think is what it is, and then he, um, and he like uh, puts a powder on himself, and that won't come off, so it becomes invisible. And then he gets overpowered, and then becomes like Jack the Ripper, and like wants to hold London hostage. So it's <laughs> it's the H.G. Wells novel is trash. The um, I'm gonna have to what, read it because uh, he's definitely in the league of extraordinary gentlemen. <laughs> yes, he is. And, uh, it's, I don't think it's really worth your time. It's the first half is interesting. Cause it's like, it just throws you in there. And then all these towns, people are freaking out. Cause it's weirdos in the town But then By the time you reveal what's going on and like the backstory, it's very expositiony. So like, it's, it's whatever. It's not like a classic, like a Frankenstein or something like that. Mm. But um, the the movie, the 30, 1933, the visual effects are still pretty great. And with that, I stand by these visual effects. They're not perfect, oh, but God. I, I think they're pretty good. Okay. So here's where I have my first science. <laughs> so they first go, this, this gorilla dies. Let's face it. This gorilla dies. And they go, it worked. <laughs> no, it didn't. It fucking killed him. And you had to like do all this shit. Okay. That's V-fib. So on that screen was VFib. You shock VFib. Um, when the flat line goes flat, you don't shock it because you do CPR to c- increase cardiac like viability. So you fill, you pump up blood, you get the heart full of blood, and then you shock it if it's fibrillating in the hopes that you can start it again. If it is a flat line and you shock it, every time you shock a heart, the likelihood of you getting it back to work is less and less. So if you shock a dead heart, odds are you're gonna it ain't gonna fucking work after. Shut the fuck up! A gorilla's dying. This is, this is like who? <laughs> God damn it! There's a dead gorilla on her. He's gonna shove that needle into his awesome heart. This is so fucking cool. You get to see all this. I love it. And I so it. they try to explain the science of this, right? And um, do they? It's so you <laughs> enter you enter the quantum realm. Is that the? Like, that's uh, that, that's Ant Man and the Wasp. <laughs> I don't understand, because like, why does it kill you to bring you back if you're still? No, it, no, it makes his heart stop because because maybe it's like 
the serum itself is too much pressure maybe it's too much pain on the heart i don't know they don't they don't even explain it it doesn't matter it's my point like this being just b movie trash just enjoy the visuals what they should have done is um kevin bacon in the beginning was eating twinkies and spying on that woman there's so many things he should have done, but he should have been drinking, right? And like trying to solve this thing. And there should have been like a reference to a letter where the Pentagon has been like, it's been four years or 10 years with this. And you have yet to show any promise. We're cutting your funding and giving it to some other scientist, right? And so that's why he goes to human trials. He gets desperate. There's no reason for him to be desperate in this. Everything is working. It's because the Pentagon's going to take it away from him. That's why. But he's already going to take it away from him. He's being funded by the Pentagon. No, what, but like, take, like he's going to do it. That's definitely a real gorilla right there. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Not a guy Christ. in a suit. <laughs> got, the, got the suit from Congo. Um, but no, it's, it's because the Pentagon's going to take it over before human trials. And then the Pentagon, the, the general guy's mad at him and says, you're not going fast enough. I just, if you're doing research for the Pentagon, you're obviously not going to take it to market. You, you, you know what I mean? Like, the, the, It's because uh, the Pentagon's going to take it and put their name on it, not his. It's, shh, shh, don't question it. Don't question it. Just go for it. Science. Science? Um, it was nice to see a young Josh Brolin, though. I was like, oh, this Josh is, Brolin. This, this is a stacked cast. We have Kevin Bacon. Elizabeth you got Shue. Josh Brolin. Elizabeth shooing it in, shoehorning her in. She is awful. Like, she is the worst actress, but I know why she's here. There's <laughs> that guy, and then there's that girl who's in things. I've seen her before. Uh-huh. I don't know their names, yeah. but he looks like Chris Elliott, but he's not Chris Elliott. I hate to say this, but I kind of wish Jennifer Lopez was in this. It might give it a little more, like, oomph. Because Elizabeth Shue just is... I... I don't know. I'm not impressed. She looks confused. She looks kind of confused all the time, or she's doing like an empty kind of smile. Well, I'm thinking like J Lo. I think of like her and Anaconda because it's that, that like that time frame. Like she just looks, she looks angry all the time. And yeah. Anaconda. They should have taken the entire cast of Anaconda plus Josh Brolin and put him in this movie. Ice Cube should have been the guy that looks at Playboys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That would have been awesome. And then and then instead of yeah. Eric Stoles, you have Kevin Bacon. They're basically like kinda like look mm-hmm. the same, just Eric Stoles has red hair. Owen Wilson is um the the I am God guy. No, the, Owen Wilson the is guy the guy upstairs. He's the guy. Owen Wilson's the gorilla. <laughs> wow, it's so glad to be back. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I can see myself. Oh my gosh, wow. So now we're setting up Kevin Bacon and Elizabeth Shue have had a relationship in the past. Um Elizabeth Shue on, does not know how to um, act professionally, ever. Um, or act in general. Yeah, and like she's supposed to be done with him, right? Mm-hmm. If I was Josh Brolin, I'd choke her. But um, <laughs> <laughs> that's Kevin Bacon's job. Yeah, but so she does not know how to put any boundaries on anything, and it's you're right. It's like Paul Verhoeven. Is trying to do a fly kind of thing, but it, no, but like, but yeah. I can't, but I, I don't get this triangle because she's obviously leading him on because she she meets him out there, she's smiling, they're having this intimate talk, and then right. and then she says, Josh Brolin later, I love I like you because you're everything he's not, and it's like, it's like really because it seems like you you really want the the Kevin's bacon. Yeah, it's fucking stupid. Um. I guess this is a good time for uh, ghost or goofs because they're introducing the dog that isn't going to get fucking slammed later. <laughs> um, so ghost or goof story somewhere deep on a road in West Virginia truckers report that they have hit a carriage with a man and a woman on a freeway in West Virginia. That's the whole story? Yeah. Truck drivers keep hitting this carriage, but then there's no carriage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say that's a, a real ghost story because it's too boring to be a ghoul. 
It is. It's one of West Virginia's ghost stories. I have many West Virginia ghost stories. I know why, too. Because <laughs> it's the third on the Google search. Of oh, that's, that, wasn't, that wasn't why, but that case, oh, works, too. Okay. I also <laughs> have a direct line to West Virginia ghost stories. Okay, that, here's your Pentagon explanation here. If I saw this, okay. I'd be freaking the fuck out. Be like, okay, you're doing a great job. Keep it going. We'll give you whatever funding we want to because we're going to have invisible assassins in two months. <laughs> Can you imagine Biden <laughs> sitting in this? And he's like, huh, Jack? You're telling me you, you made a, a gorilla invisible, Jack? Huh? Where'd it go? <laughs> Where'd the gorilla go? <laughs> and they're like, hey, can you look at women naked? <laughs> is that Bush or is that Biden? It's a mix of both. <laughs> Bush and... Or, I mean, really, at this... What what we really want is Clinton in charge of this program. He's like, Look, wait a minute, <laughs> you're telling me you could turn naked like I could be in a ladies' restroom <laughs> watching women pee. Which I also have an issue with um, both this movie being too progressive and also this movie not making sense in their bathroom setup, where their bathroom <laughs> is multi gender, but before multi gender was a thing. Because they have urinals, and also they set up a toilet with no stall. It's just in the middle of the room. But there's multiple urinals, which makes you think that this bathroom is used by more than one person. But there's one toilet in the middle of the room with no stall. Like, people are meant to watch you shit. I don't know Why? what you are talking about right now. Oh, we'll find out. Well, I'm guessing because it's like a single bathroom, right? No, because there's multiple urinals. Okay, I have to there remember. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't recall the, the titular shitting scene. Sorry. <laughs> it, it it threw me off. Also, why would the Pentagon be, like, giving them shit? This is like, they're like, wait a minute. You injected some random shit into a gorilla, and it is invisible. Yes, and a dog is invisible, and a cat Rats. We can make things invisible. You think that alone, the Pentagon would be like, take all of our money and do what you must. Yeah, that's what like, I was saying. I was like, I was like, this is the, the the real scene would be like, you're doing a great job, keep going. And that Dr. Kramer did say, shut up, science nerd. This is what we want is invisible <laughs> assassins. We have legitimate ninjas now. Yeah. Like... <laughs> Can you imagine Osama bin Laden just like laying in his cave and invisible ninjas come in and just beat the shit out of him? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so here's the so, Jurassic Park moral quandary scene, but nothing like Jurassic uh, Park at all. Oh, that would be amazing if Jeff Goldblum comes in. He's like, wait, wait. Fly. Ca chaos theory. He, or he just comes in and goes, you want to see my teleporter? <laughs> Uh, okay, so now they're they're yelling about going to human trials and how stupid that is, which we can all agree it's stupid. Oh, sex, yeah, baby. No, it's no, 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 it's not. It's this is like what they're it's, here for. They are literally doing this. This is what they are doing. Is they are here to to do human trials. They're doing the Invisible Man. <laughs> it's the whole thing here. <laughs> you think they'd just get a hobo? <laughs> <laughs> well Kevin Bacon's got the ego there but um so while these two are are canoodling here let's do some shot or not okay shot true or, or false. not true or false yeah. Kevin Bacon primarily took the role because he wanted to be a part of the state of the art CGI techniques like the motion capture suits true or false hmm false he was broke <laughs> uh, it's false Be but uh he took the role because he was gonna supposed to be barely be on scene because he's invisible but they actually made him wear the motion capture suits to help out the actors and he was very upset about it because he thought he was gonna get an easy pay <laughs> for this. what a piece of shit i, I took this movie because i didn't want to act how dare you sir it's kevin bacon he's a he's a national that treasure I thought about it too because I was like, oh my God, they covered him in latex and made him walk around and act. 
Mm-hmm. That must have been so uncomfortable. Uh, I think like, the latex was yeah yeah it was, it was like a skin like mask but like when he's invisible he has to wear like the like the CGI like mocap mm-hmm. suits, and that was telling the uh, the amazing joke. Oh my god! Wait, I've heard I, this that, before. Um, I heard it before in this movie probably, but yeah, this is like a, a like a twelve year old would think this is funny, and then they're all sitting there like smiling at this. They have doctorates. I, I just know I've heard this joke before, from other people, and now I know those sons of bitches stole it from Hollow Man. Or Hollow Man stole it from res- somewhere else. Mm. But the the joke is that Superman tries to rape Wonder Woman, and he ends up in raping the Invisible Man. What a great mm-hmm. joke! <laughs> right. I don't know why the Invisible Man's related to Wonder Woman and Superman, but yeah, it works. This is where everyone jokes about Kevin Bacon's big dick. Kevin's bacon bits. <laughs> um, why he has to be naked for this? Beyond me. Um, um, so I, I'm I'm not going to question it. I'm just going to look at that bacon <laughs> ass. Um, Sebastian's being a pervert by telling a sex joke. Do we drink for that, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Let's do that because he's telling a rape joke too. Yeah. Hmm. Which is a setup for later, where the Invisible Man does rape somebody. Um, yeah. Now oh, there's a reference to snuff film. <laughs> so in my <laughs> preparation for this, I rewatched the 2020 version of the Invisible Man. So after the Dark Universe, you know, thing fell fell flat when the, oh, the mummy yeah. the mummy tanked. Uh, Blumhouse got the um, the rights, or maybe they didn't need the rights because the book's so old. But Blumhouse did an Invisible <laughs> Man, um, starring um, Elizabeth Moss. You know, um, she's from a fucking Handmaid's Tale. So here's my synopsis of mm-hmm. that: it's um, it's a well-made film carried by an excellent lead performance in which Aaron Rodgers stalks, gaslights, and tortures the Handmaid's Tale. So <laughs> Blumhouse made like a a really low budget but excellent kind of retelling of this story but it's not the scientist it's a an asshole boyfriend gaslights his his ex it's it was came out in 2020 so you know it's kind of like he it takes uh. on like the whole like me too kind of thing but like i i think it's i think it's better than that so like you could say it's of its time but i think you could just watch it for what it is and still be like oh this is a really actually well-made movie <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't know really how you make a great movie about this. Um, the movie's pretty good. It's a, it's a tough story to tell, in a short movie format, you know. Because like, eh. I mean, there are some interesting questions, like what would you do if you were truly invisible, and like some questions of like, what does happen to your human humanity if people can't interact with you? You know. Mm-hmm. Like if you can no, truly well, be invisible, like, well, like does you, what happens to your morality? What happens to because you have no uh, accountability for anything? Yeah, no, and so I the, think that's I think it's I, I think that by itself writes itself. I think the problem is um, this movie is written by twelve year olds <laughs> who are like, you know what I do if I was invisible? I'd watch mm-hmm. girls pee in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. You know who's written by? I've been watching Eastbound and Down again, and you know yeah. Kenny Powers is like stupid friend that like oh, this yeah. little like this little minion. That's who wrote this movie. <laughs> Kenny, you know what you do? You'd watch women pee, wouldn't you? Because it'd be hot. <laughs> he'd be like, "Fucking right, I would." <laughs> yeah, well, no, like, because like I can see this like The Fly. It's similar because like flies about sexuality, right? Because Jeff Goldblum fucks that girl. The difference is this one went for like the rape route, but you could go with like he and Elizabeth Shue were like, oh, let's test out this sexual proclivity of mine. Now I can watch you. You don't even know where I'm at. Like, like you could definitely go dark with this and morally gray, but they go for the 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 stupider of two evils, I guess. <laughs> I there's just so many, and it's weird because I want to say this is made by idiots, but Paul Verhoeven is not. He has made movies that were very smart. 
like he's Robocop. made some of the best and also some of the yeah. worst. He's made this and he's also made um, Showgirls. Yeah, he did. But he made Starship Troopers too. So he, like he yeah. he knows how to like tell a story and get a point across. But this, I sense there was some inner because even Showgirls is ridiculous, but it still feels very Verhoeven. But so over the top, it feels Verhoeven. Yeah, this doesn't feel Verhoeven. This feels like Verhoeven made a movie, and uh, the studio came in and was like, "No, no, 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 we want a a two thousands action horror film." Okay, uh, shot or not. Paul Verhoeven has stated that this film is, quote, the first film I should not have made. (laughs) Oh, boy. That's got to be true. It is true. According to IMDb, at least, there. I think this looks good. I think these visuals look good. Um, But um, uh, he said that, like, this is the movie that anyone could have made. But it, he was having a hard time getting movies because Showgirls, um, <laughs> because of just like yeah. his last movies, Showgirls, like just it tanked. Like it just he like, wasted a lot, he <laughs> burnt a lot of money on that. Because you make an NC-17 movie, you're not gonna make any money back in the theater. No. So he took this one to kind of stay relevant, and then I don't remember if this is the last one he made in America because he went back to Holland and made his own movies. He's gonna make another one. Coming out, um, I think next year, his first uh, return to American cinema in twenty something years. Oh boy! Um, but yeah, but like he did, he did like Basic Instinct, so like he he has like he could make a, di- a different type of film. Like he's made these weird yeah. uh, foreign Dutch films that are very you know sexual, very much about religion. Because ironically, for all of his like sex capades in movies, he's a very religious man, and um, <laughs> so like so like his movies. His movies have depth and differences to them. It's just this one and Showgirls are like those odd ones. Like, what happened? Yeah. I. If you're going to make an NC-17 movie, it better be hot. Like, if you want to make money in theaters, it better be like Fifty Shades of Grey hot. You know? Like, it, but uh, they fucked up. It, Showgirls is literally in the Hall of Fame of fuck-ups. <laughs> Yeah, it's. Uh, I don't think I've seen all of it because I think I've. But I tried to watch it once. I was like, I'm. I think I'm done. Like I think, like it desensitizes you I so much. It, like because like you see so many tits, you're kind of like, I, I think I'm broken. Like I think something inside of me <laughs> has has kind of like broken me. You're like, can I just see a dick? <laughs> um. So this is the part where he's now invisible. So we're getting introduced. Mm-hmm. Kind of interesting. Yeah. Okay, I, I like it. You know, they're playing with it. Um, now, they do mention that he can't sleep because his eyelids don't block light. Mm-hmm. So that's an interesting thing, right? So you could play with yeah. this like seep- sleep deprivation going in, yep. which could easily be remedied. All they have to do is freaking inject him and put him down. Or put sleep. on some like, put on a mask thing. Like one Seriously, of those, like, like what the those, fuck? Those, those sleep things you wear when you fly. <laughs> like my wife doesn't like light in the room. Yeah, so she does that, and she sleeps like a baby, and she doesn't rape mm-hmm. people. That, I know <laughs> that we know of. <laughs> she could have raped all our neighbors. Who knows? Maybe she's peeping <laughs> on all of them. But uh oh, um, has he pinched anyone's butts yet? But the pincher oh, has, I think. Nineties technology, and here it comes. Here it comes. Oh, he's going to brush his booty. Oh, there's his dick. Nope, there we go. See? And I drink. Uh huh. Mm. So, no one cares that this pervert is now invisible. Oh, I guess drink again because he grabbed the anuses. Yeah. Uh, so they set up all the the thermal imaging now, which is like cool, but <sighs> I like it. Everyone, I'm pro everyone thermal just, imaging. Well, I mean, yeah, it's the way you would spot him, 
but like they just throw it away. No one follows it. Well, that, just like, like I said, like the, the problem here is the character, like I said, the characters to me, like, like I think the, and, and the stupid plot point about the Pentagon, like, like I think you could retool this and make it work. But, um, you know, I'm also a fan of like monster movies like this. Like I'm, I'm, I'm currently re I got a Blu-ray set of all the 1930s universal monster movies. And I'm enjoying watching those they are all <laughs> trash and wonderful so much. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure in swamp thing, there's boobs. Uh -huh. Swamp Thing's different when you're thinking of well okay I'm thinking of Creature of the Black Lagoon Swamp Thing is like the comic mm. book movie. There's boobs in it though. Um, <clears throat> that's I think it's West thing it's West Craven isn't it? I think so. Um, there's speaking of boobs is this part. Oh my god, which is this is before he goes crazy, so like that means that he's just naturally a weirdo rapist. That's that's my biggest, my not my biggest my my biggest problem is just Sebastian is not likable and he's awful. There's no descent into madness. There's purely no. just madness. <laughs> yeah, and that's why when Verhoeven was like, "Oh, well, he, oh, people are still kind of on his side." I'm like, "Really, Paul? You think people are on his side after he starts funneling her tit like against her will? Like, what year is this? Who produced this? Oh, this movie was made by Hollywood." <laughs> 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 also i was gonna say drink every time someone doesn't wake up when they're being molested <laughs> i don't know about you but if my wife sneezes in the room i'm like god damn it and i wake up like mm -hmm. if someone starts fondling me i'm not gonna be like oh are you? i might like I don't <laughs> it's, it's my thing <laughs> like her shirt is being yanked off and her tit is being felt up and she's just moaning and sleeping. Mm -hmm. That is not. That would not work. She would wake up immediately. Mm. Oh yeah, and she's also like, "Oh, my tits Drink out, my shirts because... off." I wonder who it was. Right. Okay. Fucking stupid man. Fucking god damn it! This movie sucks. The movie's awesome. What are you talking about? I I, I put this movie for you. You wanted tits for Halloween. You want some some holy Not Halloween like tits, this, Ronnie? Not like this. Yes, you did. This is what you. It's Shane picked the movie. I'm just saying. I wanted like Halloween boobs, like teenagers having sex, <laughs> and then they get murdered. You had Kevin's bacon and red I've seen tits. Kevin Bacon's dick and red lady rape tits. You're welcome. Now, we do get to see the lady in the apartment, which is top-notch. <laughs> I think that's Paul Verhoeven's girlfriend. Good for I don't him. know why. I, I just got a feeling. Like, I have no evidence to back that up, but I just got a feeling. I have no, no logic to explain this. So, I do like the invisible scenes. I will say them doing this is, uh, it looks, it looks good. You know, it's believable that they're dealing with an invisible man. I think all the visuals are good. They're 20 years old. They're just fine. I think it looks cool and stands out. I like for 20 years old, what they do with it all. It looks pretty good. Yeah, um, it's almost oh, side unfortunate. Note. Yeah, cause it, go ahead. I know yours is more important than I had, mine. I had no idea what I was going to say. I'm drunk. You're you're drunk and tired, I can tell by your voice. Um, so I wrote this down about the Invisible Man from 1933. There's two little fun factoids. Number one, it is literally sponsored by the NRA. Really? The first thing that pops up is a Universal logo. Then, it, then afterwards, it fades out and it says, sponsored by the NRA. The National Rifle Association? Yeah, and I think it's because um, in the film, they use a gun. Oh, look at this bathroom, real quick. Okay, so, hold on. See, the two urinals... And then there's the fucking toilet. Hold on, Why? I'm looking, I'm looking. I think I'm like two seconds behind you. Okay, so there's two sinks. Two urinals. Two urinals. one toilet in the middle of the room. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be an individualized bathroom, but this is fucking with my brain here. Why is there one toilet in the open? Why wouldn't it be put in a stall? Maybe you get the option if you're, if you're some guys, you can go in together and you do sword fighting. 
But then if there's if there's a lady, it's, she can lock it. It makes no sense. I like this. And why okay, is like, some... why is there a bunch of lockers in there? I don't know. This doesn't make sense. But I like the scene, not the design of it. But I like that she's paranoid because like they're starting to be affected by this too, and she's freaked out about this. So like, I like that they do the psychological thing. They drop it eventually. But my point being is, <laughs> I like that they she does that. She's like, everyone's afraid of him now because he has too much power. Uh-huh. And if only they did this in a more subtle way of like him debating the morality or the ethics of using this or maybe we shouldn't be giving this to the pentagon maybe they have second thoughts about this Mm -hmm. and then some of them say we have to or some say no giving the pentagon this much power would be giving too much power to the government you could have your jurassic park morality scene instead of squeezy (laughs) mick hey if i was you i'd be looking at 12 year olds oh my god what does he do here I still don't know what his job is. Like, I get Josh Brolin. Oh, that guy? I get Elizabeth um, Shu. I get, even get the people upstairs. They're the brain people. What the fuck does he the, do other than look at Playboys? He, he's the token dumb guy. You gotta have a token dumb guy in every science lab in movies. Yeah. He doesn't even, like, do computers. He's not the Newman, you know? Like, he's completely he's worthless. He's token dumb guy. He locks the doors. <laughs> he cleans up. He's a janitor. He's a janitor. That's what he is. <laughs> He's a custodian. No offense, custodians aren't dumb. But uh, what but, if but, what but, if they just but, had some guy who's like, "Hello, <laughs> Senor Bacon, um, is that the you?" <laughs> <laughs> and he like spills the mop bucket, and it reveals bacon. And he's like, "Oh no, el diablo!" <laughs> <laughs> Necesitas más limpiar. Lo siento. <laughs> el invisible. Señor, <laughs> el invisible hombre, <laughs> hombre de invisible, invisible, de invisible. <laughs> oh man! And the we'll go back to the invisible man in 1933 really fast. Um, the main actor's name is Claude Rains. He's like this very maniacal voice, and uh, Mark Hamill says he inspired his performance for the Joker after him. So, oh. those are my two notes. The visuals are really good for that too. Like. Like I was watching the behind the scenes of how they did did it before CGI and he had an actual like Invisible Man. It's pretty awesome. Hmm. So drink right now because he put put his hands up her skirt. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't do anything other than go like, "Oh my god, no, no." I said no. You're like, what? What the fuck is going on here? At least slap him, or at least be say fuck you or something like that not get some rest like she's like playing coy or pretend like everything's okay and she's not like saying to herself something's fucking wrong here or maybe that's just Sebastian yeah. she acts like it's normal so this is just who he is our main yeah, character is always been an this. asshole yeah I'm just used to this I, I get a grope or two every once in a while I imagine if they did what you said this movie should have done which is like we don't know that he's doing these things like, people are like, I'm telling you, he's doing weird shit. And they're like, no, no, no. And, like, but he's a, he has to be a character that we might doubt that he is doing anything. It's people's just paranoia thinking that he's doing it. You know what I mean? Which mm-hmm. is another thing you could do, which is what do people think of you if they can't see you? You know, do yeah. they do they trust you? Or do you get to find out what people really think of you mm-hmm. if they can't see you? Or, yeah. or you make Josh Brolin's character the the jealous lover. So then he injects himself, but maybe he's a little maybe and he figures out a way to fix it, and he kind of goes back and forth. Or maybe he's just does it to himself. Or maybe a side character is fired and injects himself, and there. So maybe Kevin Bacon's actually not the bad guy. I don't know. Like, there's so many ways know. you could take this that would be a more interesting than just I'm just gonna be a rapist and then just go on a murder spree because they've already done that. There are other invisible <laughs> men. Movies all do that. So now, because of the juice, he's like super strong too. Yeah, that's I, a thing I, in the um, in the the book, which this is not called the Invisible Man, and I don't know why they had to license a book called Hollow Man that has nothing to do with this story at all, just to get the <laughs> title for it. I don't know why they did that, but then um, but yeah, in the in the book. The, the 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 powder serum gives him super strength and then in the 2020 movie 
he's super strong, but he wears like a suit with like cameras on it that, that kind of like reflects, ref, uh, refracts light. So you, it looks uh, like he's invisible. Huh. So you see how she's squeezing that bag? Okay. She's going to fuck up his lungs. Like <laughs> there's so much air in that. Like you need a quarter of the air in that to properly inflate your lungs. And she never inflated the fucking tube on that tube. So th- she fucked up. Not only she fucked up the innovation, but then she didn't do like s- secure the tube. So it's just this free floating tube in his fucking throat. Like, Oh my God. You know that this so is a, a movie with actors who don't care about this at all. Right. But just for the love of God, hire a person for one day to just show you how to do it right. It's exciting. They gotta squeeze the things. It's gotta be exciting, it's, Shane. It's definitely CPR's, a Hollywoodism. CPR's boring. <laughs> In real life, it actually is really boring. <laughs> if, if it's if I'm not it's being the, if, yeah, if if I'm not doing fucking tracheotomies and like you know with a pen, I don't care. I want them to do real CPR, which is where the first fucking push on their chest, you just hear the crack of their ribs as you break their sternum, and they go like, oh, God. <laughs> and then and then the person get, like, gets tired after two minutes, realizing, like, God damn, doing this God, many rotations this is, exhausting. Is, like, this is very tiresome. <laughs> yeah. I like this. It's this funny cool. to see people who do CPR for the first time don't realize what a broken sternum feels like and they go like oh my god and you're like oh yeah keep going (laughs) (laughs) so this is actually a fun idea this is part of the part of the movie i'm like you know what i like it it would be a living nightmare like having that latex on yeah like also yeah but she she's cutting his eyes Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. Yeah, she. He does, he, but he cuts it so so close to the yeah, island. I'm like she's <laughs> real, uh, real close with those scissors. She's not being very careful. Because you wouldn't know Oof, if you hit his yeah, eye. He, yeah, definitely hit the eyeball. It's like a fucking French fill cut into a sheep's eye. That's a deep cut. Um, literally <laughs> and metaphorically. Um, what was I gonna say? I remember now. It doesn't matter. But yeah, I like this. It reminds me of like old old school Hollywood. It's got that old school Invisible mm-hmm. Man feel. Like in the original one, it's like the bandages everywhere and the, the big nose. And this one, it's a cool little throwback to that kind of. Well, didn't in, uh, let's say, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, he'd put on makeup. He put powder, so that people yeah, could powder see in his him. face. Yeah, yeah. Which was fun. I liked that. But he wasn't a rapist. He was not a rapist, I don't think. No, no, no. They thought he was, and it turned out to be a good guy. I lost cohesion again, drink. <laughs> so now we've gone back to the magic trash can. Please tell me how to do this correctly. Uh, uh, I, like, so. I like how they're trying to s- stupefy or simplify I, I combine simplify and stupid. Stupefy. Um, stupefy? What? <laughs> the science to, um, I, I got to get from A to B to C to D, but I need to go to A to D and there's no B, C. I was like, this is stupider than people trying to explain like black holes. With the, I don't <laughs> so, know why his, his vomit's clear. You, you will appreciate this. If you've ever listened to another podcast that I've been on, um, my buddy Mike gets fucking livid when um movies try to dumb down or explain science to him he feels in- extremely patronized and gets violently mad um we call it the salt <laughs> shaker effect so <clears throat> in every space movie there is either a scientist who explains to another scientist who already knows about like wormholes or the concept um and will take a piece of paper and fold it and push a pencil through it to explain yeah. wormholes. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or slingshotting using gravity with a salt shaker. It's in every space movie. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, he fucking loses his shit. If a scientist grabs a salt shaker and is like, so what we're going to do is slingshot, he just turns off the movie and he's like, done. We're not watching this anymore. Like, 
Yeah, if you, uh, Mike's been on the podcast twice, and you'll know he his has. personality very quickly. Oh, wait. Um, don't uh, yeah. ever. Mike, wait, which Mike? He... Hmm? Which Mike? My, which my friend... Mike. Yeah, as I was saying, he's been he's, on the podcast yeah, before. Yeah, he's been on the fifth element, yeah. Yeah, yeah, listen to the fifth element, and you'll know what we're talking about. <laughs> you'll be like, yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> it's a very, he gets very defensive, yeah. and he's very particular. But yeah, um, I don't know what Mike wants from a fucking movie. Watch a documentary. Watch Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> He'll explain it to you like you're, like you're not a scientist. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, no, he just wants the movie to just go about and be like, we're going to use a wormhole. He goes, I don't need to be explained to you what a wormhole is. I fucking already know. <laughs> I'm, okay. I'm so glad that Mike <laughs> knows what a wormhole is. It's hilarious. Yeah. It's it's salt shaker. <laughs> so this cracks me up too. What are those bars on the uh, elevator supposed to do? Like, are someone trying to drive into the elevator? Like, um, and what if the elevator doors opened up? A person could still go under those bars or step over those bars. So what are those bars supposed to stop? Um, maybe it's a lock in place. I don't fucking know. What are you asking me? <laughs> I didn't write this stupid fucking movie. So, here we go with, um, oh god, this music. It's so bad. I have subtitles <laughs> on the sound off, so I don't know. <laughs> Why? Why would they have, like, this music? It's the 2000s, man. You got to watch things from the lens of the 2000s. Back then, it was okay to grope women and listen to new metal. Oh, man. Oh, and here's the classic, like, monster movie trope where there's, like, the kids can see the monster, but adults don't. You know? Yeah, this is fun. <sighs> it's, it's fun. Okay. He's fucking around with the kids. It's fun. Um, Why would he still be able to... um? access the elevator if he became a subject couldn't they like tell the computer like he's not allowed out why well the, for some reason <laughs> they think he's a really good guy who doesn't abuse his power and doesn't grow people so they give him full access still i, I, I don't know man this, this movie hurt watching it last night and it hurts even more tonight but now we're getting into the real shit so he's home now, he eats a Twinkie, and this is where he gets to see... Uh, then he makes her eat a Twinkie. <laughs> so he eats his Twinkie and his latex and decides, you know what, I'm going to rape that lady across the street. Not just not just like sneak in and finally get a sneak at those hooters. He's going to go over there and rape her. Yeah, this is what it happens. But um, yeah, I can't keep saying it that the big flaw is this character here. But this scene does say a lot about me as a person. I saw this way too young, and it has <laughs> ramifications upon the movies I watch nowadays. I'm just trying to picture what the scene would actually look like, because it would be this actress like struggling and doing this awful scene, but there would be no one there. Mm-hmm. And, like, how kind of funny that would be. Because I'm sure it'd look ridiculous, you know? Like, I guess it all depends how you shoot it. And, like, yeah. like, anything looks... Like, if you watch a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff like I do for movies, everything looks silly, but then, like, the angles and how they do... Oh, he's shaking? He's, like, shaking. He's, like... like <sighs> He's got, like, an urge to do it? Is it, like, the serum makes him do this? Like, it's just weird that... Is there like a drug addiction that he's 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 like he's on like a perv serum? He's having like withdrawals. <laughs> Must touch the hiney. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, but, no, um, like, like yeah, like you know, in a different movie and a different director, I, I could see this go really dark. I want to see a showgirls level sex scene, like the pool one. Oh my uh, god! But like. With the Invisible Man. So Elizabeth Shue just is like, take me, Invisible Man. And she's just like doing this whole scene with no one there. But like way over the top. Yeah. Like Mm -hmm. flopping like a fish. Mm -hmm. 
classic movie too where she's going to answer the door but instead of like any average woman who would like tie her thing because she doesn't want to show you know whoever's at the door her tits she just like loosely puts this stuff on it's just like oh don't mind me i'm butt ass naked i'm not gonna lock the door just gonna mm-hmm. what is that well this is, this is this is now a slasher film this is gone yep. from science thing to slasher film in the second half of this because i don't think they knew they didn't want to go smart so now they're going to just go stupid yep she does have some great knockers though <laughs> like let's call a spade a spade here <laughs> well i don't know dan what do you think of this scene to air is human <laughs> to forgive divine also, look at those tits. <laughs> oh, Danny, <laughs> you and your banter. <laughs> oh, Christ on a stick. Oh, why does he move the mirror? Because to see her tits better, to fuck with her. I don't know. It doesn't make sense because, like, in concept, this is scary. In execution, mm-hmm. it is goofy. <laughs> See, and then they cut, and you're like, "Which I, th- I thought they would do a thing where like she would be in the apartment, being like, where is he?'" And we just see her like across the hall, mm-hmm. like doing her thrashing or whatever. Yeah, and you're like, "Oh God!" But, well, like I said, there was there was more to this scene before, but drink because the the pinnacle of the sex scenes has happened. I guess that's true. That's true. The biggest of the harassment things. And, like, he doesn't – they don't fully – it's like the, the writers didn't fully think about, like, what your first day as an invisible person on the streets would be like, you know? Like, they just immediately just went, like, oh, yeah, 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 you would definitely go look at all the naked titties. You just – everyone's titties. Would be like, like, what about you would go steal, like, some money or like a candy bar, right? Because you don't have to pay for anything. Because you can literally just walk in and take things. Even better. Or, I'll top that one. Uh, he can steal money so that they can self-fund their projects so they don't need the Pentagon anymore. Right? Or he could help people. You literally could go find crime. And no one could stop you because you could, you're could. you fucking invisible. You know? Like, there's so many routes that day one of being invisible would be before you delved into the darker sexual shit of rape and murder yeah i don't know, you know? It took him what, a week of this to get there <laughs> at least a week before you're in the ladies yeah. rocker room now if he went and spied on elizabeth shoe that makes more sense yep that's what i was saying like you know it's 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 dark but the person who should be assaulted should be Elizabeth Shue. It'd make more sense because they have the history. He's obviously attracted to her. He can't have her power. I want what I can't mm-hmm. have. Therefore, that makes mm-hmm. sense. And and who's going to believe her? You know what I mean? Well, they will, but 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 the police won't. Yeah, they're going to be like, um, so your invisible ex-boyfriend raped you? Like, that's kind of an interesting story, too. You could do this whole drama about, like, you know, her not oh, being yeah, believed. It's... Yeah, that's, that's what the Invisible Man 2020 was, is gaslighting the whole mm, idea of belief. I get it. Because like, be... No, but yeah, but it's, no it's perfect, though, because, her. yeah, it's the whole point is is because uh, he fakes his death, then he, then he ruins her life, and no one believes her because he's invisible. She, he's just trying to ruin her life because... He's all about power. Like that movie takes what we're saying and does it really well. And I know you don't want to see it because you don't believe women, but it's actually I like never. a really effective. It's a really effective uh, horror film. I haven't listened to a woman since 2004. <laughs> and that's why you have all those cases against you. <laughs> Allegedly. All those P. Diddy like... parties. <laughs> Pen- <laughs> cases are pending. <laughs> and essential proven guilty he kind of acts how my cat would I'm just looking at my piece of shit cat right here and if my <laughs> cat was invisible he would act like Kevin Bacon 
He'd touch you, and you'd be like, what the fuck was that? And he'd just be touching you. He'd be stealing food. He'd be being a prick. Like, Mm -hmm. but he wouldn't rape anyone. Probably because he doesn't have balls, but. Literally. How are they not like all actively trying to bring him back? Like, like I, I get they kind of are, but they, they, they're really not concerned that Kevin's losing his mind here. Well, and when he started acting weird, why wouldn't they lock him in the room? Like, why wouldn't they be like, "No, you're, you're done." Yeah, why does this guy not like, you know, hear the alarm bells going on in his head when he says, "What's it like being out there?" Well, you know, if it was me, I'd be like. Messing with people like like how do you not oh get that? Oh my god, it's a problem here. Yeah, he literally says I'd be hanging out at Victoria's Secret. Like, oh, bro, are you? Why? Why do they feel the okay. need to put this piece of okay. shit in here? Okay, so okay, okay, let's justify this scene here. What? Okay, Kevin Bacon's susceptible. Okay, we're really writing this movie. Kevin Bacon here is susceptible. Because his he hasn't slept and his brain's messed up. So let's say in theory, he's kind of losing his control of his own morality. This piece of shit comes in there and then gives him that idea. He puts it in his head. Oh, if it was me, I'd, I'd do some childish shit. I'd be sneaking on people, messing with them. And that inspires, that pushes him to the next level. But then because his brain's deteriorating, he goes too far. Like, like I, you can right. reuse all this. You, you, you can reuse this and get to that point there. I see what you're saying. So, like, Kevin Bacon, but Kevin Bacon's got to refuse first a little bit. Be like, no, yeah, no. Well, like, of, well, of course, yeah. And he like, goes like, like, but no one would know. And he's like, oh, fuck, you're right. No, All I right, think well, that's the problem, though, is, is like, like we, we've said it too many times. The problem's Kevin Bacon here, and I know you have more problems. It's my issue here. <laughs> well, he's not doing anything. This is, this is a nightmare, right? So we can't blame Kevin Bacon for this scene. No, yeah, it's a dream. This is just Elizabeth Shue's wet dream. Um. All right, ghost or goof? All right. Oh, I'm goofing off right now. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm goofing hard. Um. This story involves a man in a historic building, who, while sleeping in his bed, was sexually assaulted by a ghost, by being repeatedly slapped on the ass, by said ghost on multiple occasions at night. My heart tells me yes, but my brain tells <laughs> my brain tells me um, that's a goof. This is a true ghost story because that man was me. <laughs> I was sexually assaulted by a ghost in Salt Lake City. All right. Okay, here we go. Tell us all I, the story about, I about the Mormon lived, ghost. I lived with three, uh, four other dudes in a <laughs> historic building in a two-bedroom apartment. So four men in a two-bedroom apartment. I slept in the laundry room. And in this room, there is a mirror, a full wall mirror. And I slept on a mattress in the floor. Many people had reported seeing, like, a shadow figure move from the kitchen to the bathroom. Because it was like a hallway. But, you know, we're a bunch of drunk college guys, whatever. We're probably just fucking each other. And, you know, you know how you always see something out of the corner of your eye? But, yeah. Yep. So one night, I come home. And I see the figure, you know, the the thing out of the corner of my eye. And I was scared the shit of me, whatever. But everyone's asleep because I got home late. I get into my bed. I strip naked because I was sleeping the nude. And uh, I'm laying there. And I feel someone slap my ass as hard as they can. Like, whack. And I fucking yell and I get up ready to fight. And there's no one there. My <laughs> door is closed. No one is there. I sprint out, butt ass naked, dick flopping, and <laughs> no one is out. So like, there's no way they could have ran back into their rooms without me knowing. I then go back to bed because I'm like, what the fuck was that? I thought maybe, just maybe, in my dream, I had slapped my own ass. So I do that. And it happens a fucking again. And my butt was red. So someone would say that maybe I was dreaming and I slapped myself. I say nay. 
there was a horny ghost that sexually assaulted me those nights. <laughs> Never happened again, but that night. Speaking of assault, drink is oh, uh, Kevin Bacon's kind of kissing on him. And she doesn't do anything. She doesn't push him off of her. She just goes like, oh, thank you. No, no, it's so wrong. You could say she's afraid of him. That's Maybe that's why. I'm not going to justify his actions and her lack of reactions there. But um, I like to blame the I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> While you were rambling and I wasn't listening, um, I was thinking that um, his – his face looks like um, Deadpool and the X-Men origin, uh, Origins Wolverine. We're like that shitty Deadpool at the end of the movie. <laughs> he really does. Uh, so this is where he he wants to get out. Like, is that is that what he wants to do? Yeah, well, because like he's he's losing it now and he's done. And he doesn't want them. Do anything. I don't care. I like the thermal in- imaging on this, so it actually shows like the body heat on the, the right. bed there. But yeah, they want they want to turn him back because doesn't Josh Brolin discover the cure and he doesn't want it anymore? Right? Isn't that the whole something like that? Like he doesn't want to give out the power. Which okay, okay, that's a little interesting. Um, why don't they tranquilize him? Like. If, if he's yeah, why doesn't she immediately trank him if, she, if she's going to uh, grab her and push her against the wall and say, I want that shoe? Did, why don't they give him Valium so he can sleep? Like, it, incredible. The incompetence of these scientists. All right, so now oh, there's our bum who is unnecessary? There's no reason for this bum. He doesn't kill the bum. He just fucks with the bum. Um, so, oh, that's right. He's going to go spy on Elizabeth Shue and watch them bang. That's that's what he's going to do. No, the, the bum's only there so that he can grab it, and we know he's there, I guess. I don't know. There's so many other ways to do that, but I don't know. Did Verhoeven just you know check, check out? Like, he just showed up to this movie, and he's like, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to make a fucking well, piece Well, like, like, like I said earlier, he was he, he was trying to keep making movies and stay relevant. But he was saying, like, you know, he says, like, he said in the uh, interview, I only I could have made RoboCop. Only I could have made Star Trek Troopers. But anyone could have made this movie. And this, <laughs> he, I don't think he was feeling this movie. It wasn't, like, you know, unique enough. It you know, a lot of like all of his, at least my favorite Verhoeven movies are like a satire or some kind of like, you know, ultra violence and thing there. And you know what turns me on is when Kevin Bacon assaults me. I just want to go home and have sex with Josh Brolin. I want to have sex with Josh Brolin. <laughs> I think everyone wants to have sex with Josh Brolin, but only in No Country for Old Men. Josh Brolin mm. just grunts the entire time. <laughs> That's a movie I gotta watch again. I can't tell you exactly what it's about. I just remember a man with a cattle prod goes around killing people. Do you remember? Not, no, it's not that at all. You fucking moron. But do you remember when we saw it in the theaters together? I'm sure you don't. You have a bad memory. I probably hated it. Uh, yeah, but you and I and my mom saw it, and then um, at the end of because you know, it ends kind of abruptly, and you know, mm-hmm. kind of an artsy fartsy kind of way. Uh, someone just shouts out, and the movie at the very end goes. What the fuck was that? <laughs> just I remember that's how that movie ended, and some like drunk idiot in the in the movie theater just shut it out. What the fuck was that ending? <laughs> and we just started laughing. It's just like uh, in Trailer Park Boys. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> or um, I was thinking, I think you should leave. What the fuck was that? That's real. That lives with us. <laughs> that's real. That's with us on Earth. That came in my house. <laughs> So apparently, um, the not PETA, but some other animal rights activist group, like investigated the film after this, like seeing the scene because it looked believably real. So they thought they fucking actually murdered a real dog. <laughs> so Vera Owen had to show him, like the the actual raw footage of the of it was like a stuffed animal. God damn it! Why? Well, I don't think even Verhoeven's dark ass would kill a dog. Well, no, never who mind. The fuck, who, no, he'll 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 use squibs and 
and kill evil white guy businessman, but not a, not, not a dog. He's not That's a true. Who who would kill a dog on screen? Lars von Lars von Trier. He um, definitely would kill a dog. That's who I'm thinking of. <laughs> any I don't know anyone that's Tarantino might kill a be, dog too. It's not authentic. <laughs> um, okay, uh, shut or not. This movie has more Oscar nominations than Golden Razzie Award nominations. True or false? So this is only because when you look it up on Amazon Prime to buy it, it's listed as Oscar nominee. And I was like, um, can you come again? Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Oscar nominee? So I don't think it's an Oscar winner. It definitely would have put that if it could have. So I'm going to say false. It's actually true because you don't listen to my question. I said this movie has more Oscar nominations than oh, Golden Razzie Award nominations. Damn it. This movie has one Oscar nomination for visual effects and zero for Razzie Awards. Jesus. How did I not get any Razzies? That year was 2000, 2001. I can't remember. I looked in, I, I wanted to double check because I, I was surprised by shit. Like crazy, but... um. The winner for 2000 shit was, I can't remember. One of the years was Battlefield Earth, and the other one was Wild Wild West. I'm getting my years mixed up. And those movies took a lot of the awards. Battlefield Earth like cleaned up at the Razzies that year. <laughs> the sad thing is I enjoyed Battlefield Earth a lot more than I enjoyed this piece of shit. I feel like that should be a commentary <laughs> track because I haven't seen... That in years. I think I saw that with you the very first time. I think your dad was watching it the very first time I came over to your house when we were like in kindergarten. I like I have a very vague member memory of seeing part of that movie with you. I, when we were really little. My dad didn't like a lot of things. I don't know my dad very well, but I know he loved Battlefield Earth <laughs> <laughs> and Star Trek. <laughs> um Yeah, okay. but I, I vaguely remember watch, sitting down and watching part of it with you and your dad, and then we got bored and left and <laughs> did some other child shit. I don't know. <laughs> we went in the lady in Victoria's Secrets and looked up women's skirts. <laughs> <laughs> so Explains a lot. This is where the hollow man is going to kill this guy because he's going to shut him down, right? Mm -hmm. um, instead of like sli slicing his throat, choking him he throws him in the pool now i get in the they, loudest way possible they do it because they want to do this water ghost scene thing yeah um looks cool it's okay i'll allow it i'm confused why does kevin bacon have hair here but not when he wears the latex thing i don't know because latex covers his hair they just poured it on his hair, on his head, though. He was, was was he wearing a skull cap? Oh, yeah. Wouldn't the latex have a hair shape? But was he wearing a skull cap? I don't know. He's wearing a do-rag because he's cool. Kevin <laughs> Bacon could pull off a do-rag. <laughs> <laughs> Any more Kevin's bacon in this? Way more bacon. I, Come on. I never need to see Kevin Bacon ever fucking again. I, I like him in Footloose, and that is it. How dare you? Tremors? Fucking Tremors? He's in a... Okay, okay I'll allow him in Tremors. He's, I do like him He's in, in a good movie called um, Cop Car, where he plays um, a drunken, um, uh, corrupt cop, and two kids steal his cop car, and he has to like, get him back, and he wants to murder these kids. It's awesome. <laughs> he's, it's an awesome movie. God See Cop damn. Car. Don't watch cop. Hollow Man, but watch Cop Car. Um, cop Car. I'm a big fan of uh, Mystic River. It's a Clint Eastwood movie with Sean Penn, Actually, Kevin Bacon, and Tim Robbins. Yeah, yeah. So that's a great movie about. It's like one of those first movies when like I saw, I was like, it's like, oh, this is what good movies are. I just remember like, like good drama and like good mm -hmm. performances. That's a good is movie. Mystic River, where Sean Penn's the, I almost said it. Um, Mentally challenged guy. With no, a it's I am Sam. You fucking moron. I am Sam. <laughs> no, uh, Mystic River is the one where uh, Sean Penn's like a 
kind of a local mob guy and his daughter is killed. And mm-hmm. then, um, and he thinks that Tim Robbins did it and Kevin Bacon's a detective. And it's like, um, it's on a, thing. it's on a mountain, right? Like a country town. No, no. What the, you haven't oh. seen Mystic River then. I'm going to have to watch Mystic River again. Mystic River is pretty good. Check out Mystic River. It's pretty good. It's good drama. Some good drama. Speaking of drama, we're trapped in a, <clears throat> in a, the the facility used in We Cl- Who Cloned Tyrone. Um, oh, that's a good movie. <laughs> we should watch that instead. <laughs> Dude, that movie, I knew it would be like fun when I saw the previews, mm-hmm. but I didn't realize how like awesome it would be. No, that, that's a great B movie, kind of like black exploitation kind of movie. Uh, uh, that's great. Check out. We talked about the, it in our uh, wrap They up. cloned I don't think Tyrone. We yeah. Said how good it was. It's a good movie. Um, and John Boyega did not know that was him. Yeah, uh, good cast. But yeah, John Boyega's got range when he's not doing yeah. Star Wars crap. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I kept watching this, especially the last thirty minutes of this movie, I just kept thinking of a Scary Movie Two, <laughs> because like I, I like Scary Movie Two really spoofs this movie a lot with like the invisibleness and like mm-hmm. the, the freezer scene and like the the stupid gadgets and gizmos. But I don't know why they really honed it on this movie. Besides, it was fucking terrible. I don't know. It it really is bad. Oh, also drink for the '90s technology. Yeah, the uh, the the Jurassic Park looking security door stuff. Oh, the black girl dies first. That's racist. I also. Oh so, God, he's got a fucking shoestring. <laughs> no. What drives me crazy too is like they don't establish that the serum makes you stronger. Because mm. like. I'm pretty sure they said what Kevin Bacon was five eight one sixty. I'm bigger than Kevin. Bacon. I could wrestle even invisible Kevin Bacon. How dare you? Like I'd I'd take him out. Like no one can fight Kevin Bacon. Like once he like touches you, you you just you can grab him. You know. Well, he has the element of surprise. You can't fucking see him. I, it's like it's like blind wrestling. Like you blindfold you and me. Whoever's blind is gonna have the yeah, the but disadvantage. like if his hands are around your neck, then you have a good kind of indication where his cock is, and you just start going. <laughs> for it. Oh, I know what his cock is. I've seen it a lot just, in this movie. It's just <laughs> flopping around. Like you, you, you can get a hold of that, and you're gonna get the upper hand in this fight. <laughs> I don't know, Dan. What do you think about Invisible Kevin Bacon fighting penis? What do you think about that? Kevin's bacon is greasy. Whoa, whoa, okay, calm down there, there Daniel. Calm down. That's 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 a little much. That's you can't much. say that word. <laughs> so. uh, hey, Daniel, hey, Danny, Jesus. what do you what do you think about the black girl dying first? I am Sam is an uplifting movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Danny! <laughs> Why aren't they wearing the the goggles the entire time? Why do they take them off? Why would you ever take them off? Maybe it's maybe you like think. I guess you'd run into shit, right? Because not everything gives off a heat signature, so you'd be running into shit. But still, I at least have them on my head the entire time. Yeah, like ready to pull down at a moment's notice. Mm-hmm. Also, why do they assume he's not in the room with them? Yeah, they they dropped their guard very quickly. Like, especially when when he has stun guns. I, they, they just keep assuming that he's not in the room with them because the the moot the plot expects them to know that he's not there. <sighs> oh damn! Oh yeah, she's punched the shit out of her. Fuck out. We fight. I don't give a fuck about who's fault this is. That's what I know what we should do. <laughs> yeah, th- this is the part where all the the doctoral candidates here like get, act really stupid. Oh, incredibly stupid. This is the part where the rap breaks down. Like, no one, no one peeps, no one makes a sound. Everybody acts like it's <laughs> 8 Mile now. But... <laughs> <laughs> um. So, oh, the motion tracker. 
No, I'll drink. Um, did you ever? Uh, this is definitely Alien. Um, did you ever watch um, the movie Life? Speaking of Alien, that's an Alien knockoff. The Life with Jake Gyllenhaal and Ryan, Ryan Reynolds. Reynolds. Yeah, have you ever seen that one? Yeah, it was okay. Yeah, I, but it has the same problem with this, where like these scientists and like astronauts start acting like stupid mm-hmm. when um, when they're introduced to a monster, and like and like I get that an average person would panic, but astronauts are literally picked. To not yeah. panic because they have to literally make precise decisions in the blink of an eye. Otherwise, they will. They have to do fucking rocket science literally in the blink of yeah. an eye. Otherwise, they yeah. will die. So, I, yeah, I, I like. I've, I'm trying to remember it correctly, but I think Ryan Reynolds is the only one that kind of acts like you should around the alien. No, he does something stupid. He gets um. He decides to go inside the the thing by himself, and he doesn't just jump out of there. They all like. Once the creature starts metamorphosing into something larger and mm-hmm. like actually menacing, they are start acting kind of stupid. So it's like it's a fine way. Sure, movie. Just... doesn't it go in his butt or something. He like gets inside. No, I think it goes it goes through his mouth and it comes oh, out the part yeah, of him, kind right. of like a la Alien. It's a lot of kind of rip off of Alien, really. Yeah, but it's not it's not terrible. But you know, I like sci fi horror. Anything with it's trying to knock off Alien. So this is where he realizes, oh, it's the steam. But he doesn't put his fucking, once again, doesn't put his goggles on. Why is he just shooting randomly? Put your goggles on and then shoot Kevin Bacon. Also, how strong Walk is Walk up Kevin? to him. Walk up to him and shoot him. You don't have to like be a shareable shot. Walk up and put the fucking barrel to him and shoot him. Also, how strong is Kevin Bacon? Do you know how hard it would be to hang off a pipe and and choke a grown man like are you kidding me what especially, is he sam fisher he's a big guy what is a splinter cell uh-huh good game by the way ubisoft's really been shit in the bed but that was a good game oh yeah he's coming right for you man <laughs> A lot of aliens. Um, oh, what game we should we should both get and do? Like we we don't do video game reviews, but we should do is uh, Starship Troopers. We're making a game for that. I know. I saw that. It's like Hell Divers, but bugs. <laughs> I haven't played Hell Divers, but I was like, anything Starship Troopers, I'm into it. Let's. I know. I'm gonna play that game when it comes out. I'll come over and we'll we'll get drunk and play it, and we'll just keep <laughs> screaming bugs. <laughs> you know what to do. <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> Every time we die, I'm just gonna scream. You know what to do, Rico. <laughs> Shane, you're at, you're at half health. You know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Take the cow's way out every time. Uh, kick his ass, sea bass. Like, come <laughs> on. Okay, uh, shut or not. Okay. Paul Verhoeven screamed into a microphone making gorilla noises in order to simulate the sounds and get real responses from his cast during the um, gorilla scenes. True or false? <laughs> That's got to be true. I can only imagine. <laughs> That's definitely true. And then apparently they, they, they played Kevin Bacon's voice throughout loudspeakers everywhere to like freak out, kind of get the cast to freak out. But this movie isn't a horror anymore. This is a like sci-fi action trash. If you're going to torture people for Hollow Man, go full-blown. Go full Exorcist. Yeah, go Exorcist. Why are they yelling? Is, is it that I like this part. in there? Oh, the blood. Know, they're, they're freaking out. Yeah. So she's trying to be a good person. She's going to go save him by giving him a blood transfusion, even though he's going to continue to bleed out no matter how much blood you put in him. Um, yeah. Why don't they just drag him somewhere safe and then get where the blood's at? Cause the blood's probably stored somewhere that's safe. Rule number one of helping out a person, put your own mask on first. Like, put your gloves and mask on. Yeah. So bloodborne pathogens. This scene could have been cool, right? Covering him. I in think blood. this scene's cool. I think but this works. This works she 
he gives her plenty of time to rip all the blood Mm -hmm. and one by one throw them on the like why wouldn't he attack her now her back is turned and then she just throws it on the ground instead of up in the air Mm -hmm. like throw it out and up they actually steal this in the 2020 invisible man one but it's with paint instead that's actually effective because it's filmed you know in the dark and it's creepy and she throws it and it's like it's an effective jump scare. This is just somehow he gets around all that blood and still pops up, right? <laughs> and I like how she's like, "Oh well, I threw blood in like a third of the room, so he must not be here anymore." Like, and then he decides to to shout out and say that when he could have just fucking murdered her without that. Shoots her right in the tit. Ow! Got her. I like I like the visual of the blood on him. Yeah, I like it when like the water's on him, the blood's on him, the plaster. I like it all. I so yeah, this movie's awful. But um, I there's some things I like in it that I would keep. Oh, he's grabbing her face again. Yeah, and he just breaks her neck. Just Bark. snap. I thought he's gonna rape her. I thought that's where that was going. But he's already raped plenty. He'd just be raping everybody. Mm-hmm. There I go raping again. Oh, no, there I go raping again. Oh, no, he's dead anyways. Oh, man. I don't know. If I saw that wound, I'd be like, I'm sorry, man. I'm going to knock you yeah, out. Yeah, brother. With this, with this taser and be like, where's no way we're going to save you where well, there's a murderer walking around. And- yeah, well, there's a visible man. We'll, we'll we'll sing poems of your sacrifice. <laughs> we will sing of your sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> there once was a man who raped people and liked to look at penthouses. Then he died when an invisible man choked him upside down. <laughs> the end. Oh, but a beautiful sea shanty. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, that's what we should do. We should review sea shanties. <laughs> Name one sea shanty. Uh, yo ho, yo ho. Yeah, I was gonna say Pirates of <laughs> the Caribbean. That's all I got too. Thirteen men, dead men's chest. I oh, know no. everything from Pirates of the Caribbean, basically. Ah, ah, you got him. And Kevin penetrated Bacon penetrated his chest. Uh oh, now he's gonna freeze him to death. What if he like messed up and turned it to the right and turned it to fifty degrees? He's like, <laughs> they're like, no, it's mildly uncomfortable in here. <laughs> I'm st- still a little chilly. Yeah. They're like, technically, in like six days, I will die of hypothermia. Oh, <laughs> this scene goes on for so long, like. Oh, one little fun thing. I guess she shoves her fingers in there, though. That's fun. I don't know if you're going to shot or not it, but um, it popped up when I was watching this on Amazon. (laughs) I was like, this is so like a person who just knows too much. They like typed like duct tape would neither stick nor work in um, on skin at 40 at negative 50 degrees (laughs) due to the due to the amount of blood. And temperature, the duct tape would not stick to a person's skin. And I was like, oh, thank you, Amazon, for shitting on this movie. Being like, <laughs> dumb, that wouldn't work. Wait, couldn't you, like, wrap him in it, though, and it would still, like, like it wouldn't adhe- be adhesive, but you would no. wrap him around it, right? It, with all that blood, it would not stick to him. That's for sure. But it wouldn't stick, though, but you, but you could just yeah. wrap it and try to tourniquet it, though, right? I mean, you can't tourniquet the stomach. <laughs> But <laughs> that would be kind of funny, though. I mean, you would kill him if you could truly c- tourniquet the stomach because then the heart would <laughs> just be denied blood. <laughs> well, lack of a better word then, but you could wrap it around him and make some kind of like... You could do like a pressure bandage, yeah. Yeah. Okay, there's... 
I definitely think she would get through that eventually. But so now, why would they have bulletproof glass instead of a fucking freezer? I don't know. It's so unnecessary. They're worried about people getting into their secret Pentagon base and, and taking Thorazine or like what? What the fuck do they have in there? <laughs> <laughs> they have hundreds of dollars down there. Um. <laughs> So now Kevin Bacon's gonna leave. What, what's he gonna do? Go to Bora Bora? Like what? What? Yeah, I don't know what his long term goal is besides to get away with murder and rape. It's kind of really not clear because he's not taking the serum with him. He's actually burning it all so that no one else can actually use it. I, I don't get it. And well, like that could be his god complex. Like, like if right. they built into that saying, "I'm the one to do this." I my my plan is to, you know, like. Just live a luxurious life and do whatever I want to. But we don't even know. He's just, I'm a bad guy. There's so many routes you could go to make at least his motivation understandable. Like, him being like, I'm the only one that can handle this power. And they're like, you've gone mad. And he's like, I'm not mad. We have to destroy this because no one should have this power except for me. And yeah, you can go any of the like superhero kind of like route kind of thing, like you know, like who's responsible, the moral the ethics of having this kind of power, et cetera, et cetera. So, how does she know they'll make a magnet and not just electrocute the door? Like, um, I'm trying to think here. I the science behind this. I I don't know. I'd have to ask Neil deGrasse well, Tyson. Well, like, magnets are all about the opposite, like, polarity, right? The opposite charge. So, I don't know what's, what would the, I don't know. That's, how do they work? I don't know. As Insane Clown Posse says, magnets, how do they work? I don't know. <laughs> also, I want to ask Neil deGrasse, um, if you mix sulfuric acid and whatever the else hells he made, I don't doubt that it doesn't make some sort of explosive. But does it make as big of an explosive as this movie creates? A goddamn nuke well, goes off in here. Well, I well, it's, it's kind of like funny when like when movies like when like grenades <laughs> go off too. Like um, it very powerful apparently. Grenades. Yeah. <laughs> I love how like it blows up an entire like story of a building. Just <laughs> boom, boom, boom. When and really just it's like, like jump really far ahead. <laughs> if you see one in real life, like you don't want to be near one. It's not a lot of fun, but in an open area, it's pretty underwhelming. <laughs> You're like, oh, well, like I've seen YouTube videos of them. I'm like, oh, really? that's a grenade. Okay. But in movies, it's a movie. It's, it's like, it's like yeah. complaining about movies explaining black holes with paper and pencil. <laughs> they, they go for the lowest common denominator of human beings. Like, There's, like, People as dumb as you and I have to understand them. There's always fire. And real life explosions, at least military explosives, there's like never fire. Because it's it's a pressurization. That's just stupid. It's just all fucking stupid. I hope this movie burns. What would keep it like, you know, burning? It needs something that would keep the fire going. So I thought what they were gonna do with this she lights him on fire and he somehow is flame retardant uh, because he catches fire. Ask Dan. <laughs> can't say that word. Dan, can we say that word anymore? Remember the movie radio starring Cuba Gooding Jr.? Even Dan says he can't. So sh- she lights him on fire. He, so you're like, okay, his skin's melting. Like, and so we can see his melted skin because it's compromised. Right. right? And right. that's, he's not hollow anymore. So that's cool. But it fades away, and he's okay. If you lit someone on fire like that, they're not going to go wrestling people in fucking 12 minutes. No, his skin's burning, like, not the latex. Yeah, I, I don't know, because I don't know. Would you see the... So, like, when water's on him, you see his skin. So you right. think if there was burnt flesh, you'd see it too, right? Or at least you'd see whatever's like is in that, it, that it, compressor thing. Does he heal? Like I, the rules 
I don't think so, because later they show him all burnt up. These rules make no sense. Because he's not like covering ash; it'd be burnt flesh. Yeah, I, 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 it's fucking baffling that Paul Verhoeven didn't think of this shit as he was making it. If I still had an X, I'd, I'd tweet at uh, Paul Verhoeven and ask him, "What the fuck, man? Come on, well, yeah. why is why is the flesh coming off?" I forgive you for showgirls, Paul. I can't forgive you for this. <laughs> I've seen this movie more than Showgirls. Um. I actually also have tried to get through Showgirls, and it's so ridiculous that you're just like, I I can't. Which, I think, what was it, Red Letter? They, they were like, maybe it's supposed to be so over the top because it's like his commentary on sex or something like that. So it's sure. supposed... But, it's so incompetent that even you can't argue that. I don't know. I, I think the, I, I guess you could go with like, it's the sensitization of, you know, sexuality mm-hmm. in our culture, but like the acting is so, and the script is so bad. Like it's, it's beyond that. So I, I don't know. And, and like I said, I've never fully seen the whole movie. Maybe it's like one of those that we could watch if we were like, under the influence, like heavily under the mm. influence, maybe, and try to dissect it from there. But I've tried watching it once, and I said I'm good. I'll probably just end up jerking off. Yeah, right. I got I got, I got tired and rolled over. But um, so this is the classic um, horror trope where uh, our heroes see the villain like get hit once, and they're like, "Ah, oh, he's done so." They, yeah, they, that's... they never ensure that he's dead. No, that's a horror thing. It's always like, oh, just just assume he's dead. No, it's a horror thing. I'm trying to think of um, I'm trying to think of like uh horror movies. I watch a lot of them, obviously. Like uh, some of them were, were like they like gratuitously like kill the creature or the villain because they want to make sure it's dead. And I was like, yeah, that's what anyone should do is right? make sure they're murdered. <laughs> I, I like how he goes first. He's like, oh, yes, I'm going first. <laughs> <laughs> the Madame Rufo. Um, So my last shot or not isn't really a shot or not. It's more like a challenge for you. Oh, okay. So as we're, as we're wrapping this up and there's not much to talk about as um, Kevin Bacon's kind of like, you know, blowing up this this lab and they're trying to escape in like a aliens looking shaft. So mm-hmm. there's a famous like game called Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon. Oh, yeah. So my challenge for you, Shane, is I'm going to give you a celebrity and tell me, can you can can you connect them to Kevin Bacon? And now saying this, I realize you haven't seen a lot of Kevin Bacon films, so this might be really challenging. Oof. It's been a while since I, I played this game. Well, you can always just give up at some point. And I'll just tell you the, okay. the, two, the, the two ways that I got. But you can think about it as I talk about this film. So... Um, a month ago, we lost uh, a great voice, James Earl Jones. So in his honor, Shane, give me six degrees of Kevin Bacon for James Earl Jones. I can do that. That shouldn't be too bad. All right. Okay. Uh, and, and every time you give me a movie, that counts as a degree. So Okay. You, did, you, got. you did it in two? Uh, well, so I did it in three. Uh, an app online can... You did it in two, two, but I did it in three. I did it in three. So if you, if you can do it in three, I'll be impressed. Because I thought about it for way too long. Okay, let me. James Earl Jones. Man, I wish I saw a more 90s Kevin Bacon. <laughs> it's a hard one. Because Crazy Stupid Love is like my easiest connection to get out of Kevin Bacon. And then James Earl Jones. Oh, um. Oh, is Alan Rickman the way out? Alan Rickman's always the way out. And then. I don't know, he's gonna be back again. Is that climbing out of there? And somehow his charred flesh has enough strength to shimmy up a pole, get into that, on top of the elevator, then grab her still. It's like I can do it in a really roundabout way, 
but mm-hmm. I'm trying to be efficient with my my path. It's like yeah, well, that's the whole hard part of the game, right? Is like is like you could just start rambling and eventually get there, but can you yeah. do it? And then yeah. six is, and I think the hard part is you don't know how many kids are making movies apparently, so that's going to be a definite challenge. Well, I know I would go with Mystic River. <laughs> I go with, well, that that's how I got to it was Mystic River. So I found a connection there. But um, I mean, you can think like Footloose, like John Lithgow or um, <laughs> Chris Penn, or I'm trying to think who else is in Footloose. It's been a while. Because uh, I'm trying to think James Earl Jones. He was, he's been in a lot. I keep wanting to go to Field of Dreams. <laughs> yeah, Field of Dreams, or you get Lion King or Star Wars, you know, with the mm-hmm. big ones. He's in all the Star Wars because Darth Vader's stupid voice is using everything. I know, I'm like Harrison wait, Ford. So, wait, so, wait, wait, so, wait, so now why is Kevin Bacon, like, visual, like, visible? Like, why, why, why can we see his, his tendons now? Pull one of those tendons out, get in there. Wait, why, why can't we see him? She's doing the um, the the Catwoman way out here. She's gonna shock him like she did um, Chris Christopher Walken in the in Batman Returns. I thought she was gonna shock him. She just is able to kick off that wall plug that, 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 that's holding all the weight of the elevator. <laughs> Kevin Bacon. Steve Corral hasn't been in a James Earl Jones movie. Probably has. I don't know. He's, his voice has been lent to so many things. Yeah. I'm like... There. Harrison Ford. Um... What's my way out of crazy stupid love? What's my way out of crazy stupid fucking love? Um, <laughs> I think you picked the wrong movie. Get Marissa Tomei, Emma Stone, Steve Carell, Goslin. I, uh, I was like, Marissa Tomei is a good way out, probably. But I haven't seen a ton of movies with Marissa Tomei. That's the problem is is you're getting stuck on people that you don't know a lot of experience with. Oh. oh, it just ends too. There's no resolution. Right, we killed him. We hop in the ambulance and we gone. And the, that's it. The end. Oh, there's a Hollow Man 2 up next starring Christian Schlader. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> they couldn't even get the bacon back. God damn it. I'm not going to get a good guess in, but I'm going to lay in my bed tonight. Just up all night thinking, God damn it, Kevin Bacon. How do I? Well, the movie the movie ends with the Kevin Fried Bacon there, with burning him up and <laughs> Kevin <down>. Fried Bacon. <laughs> uh, get, oh, got any more um, ghosts or goofs while you sit there all sad that you didn't think of a good Kevin Bacon way out? A ghost or goof? Um, oh, I'm trying to think of all uh all the ghost shows I've watched. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, um, ghost or goof? A lady, um, so this lady wrote a story about how she would make pottery and her dead husband would make pottery with her, and, uh, is really, really erotic. (laughs) That wasn't Kevin Bacon, that was Patrick Swayze. (laughs) Son of a bitch. And Whoopi was there too. What a hottie. Oh, Kevin, oh, Patrick Swayze. I almost called him Kevin Swayze. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Want to hear my uh, Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon that I thought about way too long when I was making yeah. dinner? Yep. Okay, so I had, I had James Earl Jones, who's in The Lion King. Right. And then I had, then Jeffrey Irons was in The Lion Jeremy King as Irons. well. This, then Jeremy Irons was in Batman vs. Superman, which also stars Lawrence Fishburne, who's also in Mystic River with Kevin Bacon. Oh wow! You went Batman versus Superman on us. I did. I I sat there for. I was trying to do Star Wars for the longest time, thinking about Mark Hamill and Alan Guinness, and I thought about Carrie Fisher. Carrie I got it for too long. I was like, oh, 
Carrie Fisher said it was. And then I was like, oh, forgot Lion King has tons of people. So I was thinking about everyone in Lion King. I was like, oh, there's got to be someone in the Lion King. So yeah, go Disney. Everyone's been in Marvel or Disney or superhero ship. So try to go Disney and superhero ship. That's where I went. Oh, yeah. The, um, the, the, there's some kind of online app that did it in two. Two. And I was... Oh, I know. I'm sure there's some like low level movie that wasn't big that Kevin Bacon did that Well, so 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 the one that the app did was James Earl Jones was in Rogue One a Star Wars story. Oh, that's lame. I know, then which has Forrest Whitaker, and Forrest Whitaker was in the Air I Breathe with Kevin Bacon. So they did it in two Jesus. and I had never heard of the Air I Breathe, so Yeah, if you're gonna go the Air I Breathe, then fuck me. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, it's a fun little app there. Oh, so yeah, we we've, we've wrapped up the Hollow Man. Um, for our Halloween, Shane, <sighs> would you recommend Hollow Man to our two listeners? I can't. I can't recommend that anyone watch <laughs> this trash. It, and I like trash, especially trash with nudity. But it's it's it doesn't do anything well. This is very Daredevil esque, but Daredevil was way better. And Daredevil's trash. I love Daredevil. Paul, I love this movie too. Paul Verhoeven, um. <laughs> you're like, you're like my dad. Just stay in my memory, because if I meet you, I might just just see Hollow Man. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't have a response to that. I'm usually pretty good at this. I don't, um, I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> I don't know. I guess if if you're a Paul Verhoeven fan, you could see like. I don't know, his worst movie. Like, it has none of his signature stuff. Like, Paul Verhoeven likes to, you know, jerk himself off to, like, his themes mm-hmm. of, like, understanding Hollywood and the human condition. And I think there's a lot of things he could have done with this that I don't know if he didn't want to, didn't have any pull anymore in the studios. But, like, you know, with his weird sexual, like, sex hangups mm-hmm. and his violence and. His Satire. thoughts about like, society and views. Yeah, I think you could... He could definitely does something with this, but I don't know what was going on in his life that he didn't have the uh, the balls to, to do something with this. But no, it, there's there's no redeeming qualities about this. Uh, the only positive out of this is I watched a bunch of Invisible Man movies that weren't this, and they were all better. So go watch the original 33. Go watch the 2020 version. Those are significantly better than this. Do you think they have the Verhoeven cut somewhere? Like who's gonna what? spend another dime on this fucking film to re-edit it? We we released the <laughs> Snyder cut of both this and fucking whatever that Netflix trash series was that he made. Like oh, isn't that crazy? It's like two four-hour ones each. That it's insane, and they're dog shit. Um, Rebel Moon, Rebel Moon, yeah. But we can't get the Verhoeven cut of Hollow Man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone wants. Any of these really? cuts. I I petition you, Hollywood. I will pay you for the I will pay you ten dollars for the Verhoeven cut, which is more money than you're getting right now for your Verhoeven cuts. <laughs> oh my god. Um but no, I I wouldn't recommend this at all, really. There's no redeeming qualities. I saw this way too young and I enjoy it. <laughs> But there's like there's nothing good about it besides I I I think the visual effects are pretty pretty good but it's stupid. Um, my you know God, I'm tired. Um, I picture one of hmm. us getting in the mail like a Verhoeven cut, like that they send it to us, and we're like, holy shit! And I get a knock at my door, and Verhoeven's there, and he just stabs me and takes it. <laughs> you cannot see. <laughs> <laughs> And then they'll be like, how did Shane die? Oh, Paul Verhoeven stabbed him so you'd never see the, his uh, director's cut of Hollow Man. <laughs> <laughs> it's the way he'd want to go. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, any final thoughts, Shane, before I take us out of here? Or I have a special guest take us out of here? No. I mean, it was good of AI Danny to to come in here like like some shitty form of chappy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's kind of what this feels like, but we are we are de outward. Just trying to make <laughs> Danny do awful things with his AI consciousness. <laughs> oh, what another shit. Okay. 
Okay. Well, happy Halloween, ladies and gentlemen. If you're still here, thanks. Smash that like button, subscribe and whatnot, but we're out. Dan, take us out of here with your beautiful, beautiful real voice. What would you have Danny say <laughs> there, Shane? The Though my here. body is broken, my mind is free. <laughs> Happy Halloween, bitches. <laughs> the pursuit of mm. happiness is gay. It is get rich <laughs> or die trying. <laughs> oh, okay. I see how it is. Using my ferret phrases against me. No one likes Shane. Happy Halloween to Sean Penn, Cuba Gooding Jr., and Kevin Bacon. So, what uh, drinking Our games recording. did you get? Your sipping games. I was gonna do every time someone um, give wants to rape somebody. <laughs> um, every time someone refuses to use a thermal imaging device to spot an invisible man. <laughs> <laughs> or um, <laughs> every time someone sexually assaults somebody. <laughs> okay, so mine are similar. Minor, someone is in their underwear. I have cool, mm. clunky technology or techno babble. And I have every time Sebastian's being a pervert. <laughs> yeah. Or every time Sebastian's ex is intrigued by him <laughs> for no apparent reason. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm going to do. Um, Every time someone is sexually assaulted. <laughs> Twice? <laughs> How about every time Sebastian's just being a pervert? I like that. Every time Sebastian's a pervert. Okay, and I'll do clunk, like cool clunky techno babble when we talk about some of the technology. So we have our, our sexual stuff. Every time the word quantum is said. Quantum? Because <laughs> <laughs> they just use that. Like, they don't know how any of this actually would work or any idea. They just go, the quantum, quantum this, and quantum computing, and quantum medics, and quantum science, and quantum defibrillators. Yeah. Well, uh, that's actually, like, mm. remind, like when you talk about I was about also going to do every time um, incorrect CPR is performed. <laughs> <laughs> Even I noticed that that was wrong. Right. Incorrect medical interventions are performed. Like shocking asystole, when she bags him, she's pushing so much air it would have exploded his lungs. <laughs> Her innovation was kind of correct, not really. Um, he's holding um, pressure on a man's neck. <laughs> <laughs> like it's just so many incorrect medical interventions. But I like pervert and. Um, clunky cool clunky uh, technology. technology yeah and kind of 90s yeah i'll put 90s on there okay uh what's your game called uh, my game's kind of called uh real or bullshit <laughs> 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 the joke is it's all bullshit because <laughs> <laughs> ghosts aren't real <laughs> okay so ghosts or Ghost. Ghost or ghouls. Uh, ghost or goofs. Go ghost or goofs. <laughs> <laughs> ghost or lies. Uh, ghost. <laughs> Let's call it ghost or goofs, whatever. Um okay. yeah, ghost or goofs. Okay. Um do you want an intro or am I introing? Uh, intro. Okay. You intro. So then I'll start the first ad, you do the second ad, then I'll intro us in here. All right. Let's do it. Okay. Yeah, we are recording. Here we go. Let's see how many takes this takes me to do. <laughs> We're a little rusty. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> 
I just picture people being like, I met someone on Voyeur Encounters, but have I ever met them? <laughs> <laughs> I matched with them, but I never have met them. <laughs> they see me somewhere. <laughs> they see me, but they don't see you. Sponsored by the movie Now You See Me, Now You Don't. <laughs> Could have watched that one instead. What a piece of shit that was. <laughs> never seen it. You're also super quiet again. God damn it. Yeah, you're like fading in and out. All right. I'm trying my best um, here, damn it. No, no, you're doing good. All right. So now it's my turn. Yep. All right. <clears throat> I, was, I was listening to um, Notorious B.I.G. And then every time Diddy comes in, I'm like, oh, he just, everything sounds wrong. <laughs> this is off topic. But did you ever see the Tupac album cover or the back of the album that shows Diddy cross racing and like, all these things and now it makes a lot more sense is that why they killed tupac he knew too much <laughs> uh, i don't know Tup- well, tupac was arrested for sexual assault so i think they're all a bunch of a bunch of not gentlemen which brings us to our next ad join the first ever annual uh, wasted potential freak off <laughs> <laughs> we, we, watch of, uh, we, we watch a bunch of we rewatch the movie freak show <laughs> is that what you guys expected at the freak off we watch freak show <laughs> we also have a lot of baby oil <laughs> and guest appearances from Nelly <laughs> I'm upset because you stole my thunder because my joke was um, uh, <laughs> you know what? I'm just gonna keep it. I'm just gonna keep it. Okay, uh, that's fine. It's a theme. We got a theme going on here. Okay. Uh, all right. What's what's next? Okay, I'm ready when you are. Oh God. You good? Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. 